Hi, this is Salman Alana and Manos Brilakis, and this is case 205 for the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a case of fenestration of a PK papyrus stent. The patient had previous coronary bypass graft surgery with Lima to LAD and a sequential vein graft to the first obtuse marginal and the PDA, and had several episodes of unstable angina due to instant restenosis of the SVG. He had multiple PCIs, including brachytherapy of the serfinous vein graft, and now returns with unstable angina. This is his angiogram showing an osteal circumflex CTO, osteal RCA CTO. There is disease in the LAD with competitive flow from the lima. And uh, here is the patent lima graft, as well as the sequential saphenous vein graft. The first obtuse marginal is a very small diffusely diseased vessel, but the PDA and the posterior lateral are very large bradgens. And this vein graft has a significant instant restenotic lesion in the proximal segment. So at the time, a decision was made to perform balloon angioplasty of the SVG and refer the patient for staged PCI of the right coronary artery chronic total occlusion. Coronary CTA was performed that demonstrated uh, an occlusion of the proximal right coronary artery in stand occlusion. There was significant calcification in the proximal portion of the occlusion. And then uh, there was a diffusely diseased uh, distal vessel. There is the PDA that was supplied by the saphenous vein graft. So a decision was made to proceed with PCI attempt. We engaged the right with an AL1 guide and the left with another AL1 guide. And then uh, we decided to perform undergrade wire escalation as a first step because we did have some osteal segment of the RCA that was patent. And uh, the distal vessel was of good quality and large vessel, but there was a bifurcation on the distal cap. And we did have a pot potential for retrograde through the saphenous vein graft. So the first choice for crossing was undergrade wiring, followed by retrograde through the saphenous vein graft, or as a third option, ADR. This was the least preferred approach because of the bifurcation at the distal cap. So we tried multiple guide wires, and we had difficulty with penetrating the proximal cap. This was to some extent anticipated based on the severe calcification we had seen on the coronary CTA. We were able to get a subfire 1.0 slightly in the lesion and perform an inflation, but then could not deliver a microcatheter. And then after uh, multiple attempts, we decided to try retrograde crossing. So we inserted a fine cross and a gladius mongus retrograde, and then we tried to knuckle in an attempt to cross the occlusion retrograde. However, the knuckle seemed to not uh, move uh, along the course of the vessel, and then once we performed an injection, what we see now is that we do have a coronary perforation in the distal RCA. So we likely entered into a small branch of the distal RCA, and this caused the perforation. So what to do next? Like every perforation, the first step is to inflate a balloon and stop the bleeding. That's what we did. And although the patient remained hemodynamically unstable, despite prolonged balloon inflations, we did have still uh, bleeding. We can see the large area of staining. And this is of concern because we know that in previous bypass patients, loculated hematomas can happen, and those can be potentially lethal because they can cause compression of cardiac chambers, and they're very difficult to train percutaneously. So we were able to deliver a covered stand. Delivery was very challenging, but was successful using a guide extension. So this is a PK papyrus that was deployed across the uh, bifurcation, and that successfully sealed the perforation. But of course now, this covered stand has been placed across the distal cap of the CTO, essentially. So the patient was sent home to recover and uh, came back six weeks later for a repeat attempt to recanalize the RCA. We did use um, 
large Gai catheters. We try to use a different Gai catheter, 3DRC, to get a better engagement of the RCA. But then we had similar issues with support. And we knew here in this case that we had to go undergrade. The retrograde was not an option right now because we had jailed the distal cap with a papyrus stand. Guide support was a big deal, so eventually we switched back to an 8 French AL1 guide and also used the 6 French guide extension, microcatheter, and tri wires that were not successful. There was this area that was very, very hard to penetrate. So, one solution for such lesions is to use the Carlino technique. So, we advanced the microcatheter as far inside the lesion as we could and then performed injection of a small amount of contrast, less than 1 cc. And after doing that, we actually were able to knuckle a Gladius Mongo guide wire that went around the lesion and seems to be advancing along the course of the vessel. We then uh, predilated uh, that segment with a balloon and were able to advance the guide extension further down into the right coronary artery. And then we knuckled essentially all the way to the PDA posterior lateral bifurcation. So now we're at the situation where we're next to the distal true lumen, but we do have the PK papyrus stand sitting on the way. So how can we get through that area? And we knew that this was going to require high penetrating power. So what we did is advance the microcatheter. And, yet, and then used a Hornet 14 guide wire using the undergrade wire as the target. And by doing that, we were actually able to puncture through the papyrus and advance the Hornet along the right posterior ladder. This is the injection from the saphenous vein graft, confirming that we are inside the distal true lumen. And then we used a small balloon, a Sapphire 1.0, and then larger balloons to dilate through the papyrus. We tried to advance a guide wire into the PDA across the bifurcation, but uh, despite using a Sasuke dual lumen microcatheter at the Sion black wire, we were just unable to get through that area. So what we decided to do is um, to stand. So we placed uh, four drag eluting stands essentially all the way from the posterior lateral all the way into the proximal RCA, and this restored uh, good undergrade flow. However, it was not so perfect inside uh, the PDA as we can see from the dual injection. So what uh, can we do about the posterior descending artery? We definitely wanted to dilate it. But we had the similar issue. We just could not advance an undergrade wire into the PDA. So what we ended up doing is uh, we advanced a retrograde guide wire and that did advance, but it went into the PL instead of going retrograde into the RCA. After multiple attempts, we decided to use a trick, which is uh, use a micro snare into the right posterior lateral. Then we advance the retrograde guide wire through the micro snare. And then we pull the micro snare back. And by doing that, we were able to pull the retrograde guide wire back into the distal right coronary artery. So this is an example where using the snare can help uh, advance a wire retrogradely into the distal RCA. Eventually we brought the Sion Black into the undergrade guide catheter. And then after doing that, uh, we were able to advance the retrograde microcatheter and then externalize an R350 guide wire. So now we did have access through both vessels, externalized wire through the PDA and undergrade wire into the right posterior lateral. And we ended up doing a culotte. We knew that we had the PK papyrus, so we want to put a second stand. So here is uh, a stand going from the distal RCA into the PDA. And then we did the kissing balloon inflation. And this is the final result, showing good flow, both into the posterior lateral and the PDA. Sometimes we occlude the saphenous vein grafts to prevent competitive flow, but here flow was mainly undergrade. And moreover, 
uh, we had this obtuse marginal. It was very, very small branch, but it was filling through the graft. So we decided to not occlude this alphanous vein graft. There are several lessons from this case. The first one has to do with the original attempt for CTO that led to perforation. In that case, we're going retrograde and the polymer jacket wire likely entering to a small branch. So the lesson there is that the knuckle is safer than advancing wires, especially through areas of tortuosity, but not always. And it is important to verify that the knuckle is going along the anticipated course of the vessel. The second lesson has to do with uh, handling a papyrus then. We had to place a papyrus across the distal cap to seal the original perforation. And then going through that was very challenging, but was eventually successful using the Hornet 14 wire. But then every other advancement was challenging, likely because of the covering of the PK papyrus stand. Specifically, the challenge we had was to advance a retrograde or undergrade wire into the PDA. The wire just kept on going into the posterior ladder. So what we ended up doing here the solution was to advance a micro snare undergrade into the posterior lateral, advance a retrograde wire into the snare, close the snare, and essentially pull the wire back into the undergrade guide catheter. And the micro catheter came, and then externalization was performed, followed by the culotte technique for treating the PDA PLV bifurcation. So, multiple troubleshootings in this particular case. But the final message also here is that sometimes it takes more than one attempt. In this case, the first attempt was unsuccessful and actually had a complication. But then, despite that, the second attempt was actually successful in canalizing the vessel. Thank you.